Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is Amin, of course, from the Mind Heist podcast, episode 69. Now, I'm just doing this little little intro kind of clip because, unfortunately, we recorded a great episode for you. Um, it was over an hour and a half long, I think. Uh, when we finished, you realize we missed the first half hour. Okay, so the other half, the other hour is is good, alhamdulillah, So you're gonna get that. I uh, just gotta apologize. Um, some malfunction malfunction with the recording, um, and yeah, man, uh, that's it is what it is. I uh, hope everyone's okay, and let's roll into the podcast. Keeping in mind, of course, that the first half hour has been cut from that. So yeah, enjoy. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Okay, take two. Sorry. <laughs> um, we, we were talking about domestics. Okay, yes. Uh, we said, um, so <clears throat> we said obviously uh, over the age of 16, either family or intimate partners. Um, yeah, so you've got a lot of people that aren't used to living together, um, having all sorts of issues, wh- that, whether that resorts to like violence or any other like offense or criminal offense upon each other. Um, and the it takes up a lot of time bro and there's a lot of safeguarding and risk assessments that need to be done to make sure i mean let's talk about the i don't know traditional relationship which is you know married partners or you know long time partners or whatever um i'm not going to say all the time i'm not going to say a lot of the time i'm just going to say you know the times where it's the man that is the aggressor there's times when there's a woman that's the aggressor right but one of those parties is at risk of the other and if we don't do the right thing and, and deal with every job correctly and make sure all the safeguarding measures are in place something can happen to that person that you know really puts them in danger you know people die because of domestic incidents isn't that right mm. so if you've got loads of loads and loads of them and you can't deal with well i'm not saying we can't but if it gets to a point where you can't deal with them then people people end up falling underneath the radar and and you don't get to put in as much effort and time that you need to do um true now i'm pretty you know, certain at the moment, there's enough resources to deal with everything, and I think, um, you know, even if things got really bad, I think there's enough sort of plans in place to deal with this sort of stuff. However, yeah. at the same time, you got to remember, like, at least in this country, the police have been cut quite a lot. It's not that many of them on the ground. Can't respond to everything in the in the manner that you know. You can't the certain types of crimes have become so complex that they take up a lot of resources anyway such as cyber crime stuff that's done online fraud you know there's a lot of stuff that yeah doesn't necessarily get dealt with the way it we'd like it to you know um yeah yeah and on a busy day where there's lots and lots and lots of jobs emergency jobs you know you can have call outs on the radio where they just it's someone available someone available someone available okay we're going to have to look for someone in a completely different town to come and deal with this because we can't we haven't got anyone left you know i've had yeah. i've had it i've had it one day where it was like seven of us in the in a room and we had to deal with the whole city bro <laughs> do you know wow. what i mean there's just seven of us yeah. and a lot of those you might got to remember not all of those seven are going to go out on their own because it'd be mm. it's way too much to ask but a few of them do a few of them do but when you're policing like all at night when it's quite busy and quite hectic and there's like seven of you bro it can be quite daunting um Definitely, wow. Definitely, yeah. bro. I, I heard that, uh, I think it was New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, on the East Coast, anyway, somewhere on the East Coast of the US, police had stopped all the proactive stuff, basically. They're only going to where they're being called out. Mm, mm. So, I mean, that's a- I think, p- personally, I think America's going to be nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh yeah, I just realized, you know, Americans might be listening to this, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I honestly that's just what I think. I think they've got more I've, I think t- I think maybe Americans have it's just an assumption, but they've had more to be afraid of because they've built been living under a culture of fear for a long time because not only are you at the top of the world, but it's sort of lonely at the top and it's it's kind of scary at the top because you're always watching the throne. Do you know what I mean? As a country, as a as a mm. sort of idea, you know, the American dream, everything's you know, America's number one sort of thing, like whether that's mm. through movies a lot of movies obviously come from America and they're the culture of like we are the good guys and everyone else is after us, you know, and all the villains mm. are foreign and all the villains are from other countries and all the villains are yeah. do you know what I mean? So Yeah. And on top of that you've got the classic I don't know if you've ever seen Bowling for Columbine, but the classic sort of Fair, uh, classic sort of story about how gun culture developed in America um, and, right. if, uh, and it talks about like obviously 
the Americans that we have today were, you know, their 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 ancestors were people that took over the country, uh, over from the Na- Native Americans, and and because of that, they were always living in fear of Native Americans fighting back. So they, you know, armed themselves, and that this this thing about them arming themselves has always been part of their story. Um, to the point of like, I mean, look at all the nuclear weapons. They're arming themselves in case of, you know, with this fear that something might happen or there's going to be a threat to them. Oh, look, mm, the tw- you know, nine eleven happened, so we need to arm ourselves. Or offense is the best defense. Or you make so many enemies, or because you've been involved yeah. in so many wars, that now you're just you can't sleep at night because. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like, if yeah, you have yeah. not guilty conscience, but if you've got so many different enemies in so many different places, you're just yeah. constantly a fear. You know, mm. I think the media is also crazy in America. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. They know exactly how to cause people to to be scared, to panic, to the, like. They are the the, the the experts in that. Really, yeah. I mean, I know the UK is bad, but it's worse in America, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, personally, man, I I'm like I said this on the other episode. Like, if I was anyone listening to this, I would re- va- like massively reduce my media intake. Um, if you think, oh, but I need to know, I need to be up to date, you will be up to date even if you don't like go yourself on the TV or on yeah. the website yeah. or whatever. But e- just for the sake of argument, um, fine, you know, get an update five minutes a day and then get off. Yeah. Because this, this, um, on a, the, the media uh, do things in a way to get attention because they need attention because they need to sell advertising and all of that, right? Even the BBC who, who don't run ads, they need to justify their budgets and all that. Oh, so-and-so million people are watching this, so it's justified to pay to do it again, right? Um, and so they're very good at it and all of that. And so you need to you need to watch out for yourself. Yeah. yeah? And uh, they, they will... It's addictive, you know? I notice, bro, even, even myself or you know people in my house it's like um it's kind of like the next episode of whatever series is coming out honestly it's the same behavior if you really think about it it's addictive to know oh what's happening next oh what's the update well it's very bad for us man that's why you have to stop the addiction before it begins yeah you, know, you yeah, have to yeah. nip it at the bud trust me bro i so, mean so oh uh, what can you what can you do bro is another perspective i wanted to highlight is that there's a lot of stuff that you know we're all focusing about this virus for example in this specific this specific time but there's also other issues that are still going on ongoing stuff you know there's still medical issues out ongoing there's still people with these surgeries still people getting hit by cars there's still people getting stabbed there's still people with you know cancer or heart attacks or whatever uh, still people yeah. overdosing on drugs there's still people that take mm-hmm. up a lot of beds because they're um going through some sort of mental health issues or they need to be sectioned or they're suicidal or you know and another thing that gets exasperated in this situation is people's mental health people with with suicidal thoughts people's anxieties depression whatever you want to call it can be exasperated yeah. by this not only is the yeah. isolation but you've got media pumping this fear that people don't even mm. want to live anymore and there's you know i've dealt with people now that are you know suicidal that need to be sectioned that need to be taken to hospital because they're going to kill themselves mm. and all mm. they can talk about is this virus and what's going on in the world and stuff and i'm not saying that one is the cause of another but i'm sure it plays into it mm. you know Definitely, i'm sure it plays yeah. into it and imagine the guilt what does sectioned mean sectioning though? means when um either the police or a, a medical professional uh deem someone lacking the capacity to basically look after themselves um right. and in a, in a police perspective it's based on like you know their mental health maybe generally most of the time it's because they're suicidal you know they're going to kill themselves if we don't do something you know so mm. they get sectioned meaning they're pretty much against their will taken to uh, a, a mental health assessment or a place of safety which can be um a mental health assessment center or uh particular a specific site like a psychiatric hospital or something along those lines mm, um, got you. so it's something that is we deal with all the time like all the time like mm. it, honestly it's like part and parcel of the job something that people don't really think about but it's literally a daily occurrence many times a day um which people are oblivious to you know mental health is something that if you don't deal with it yourself or you're not surrounded with people that deal with it you're completely oblivious to it but a lot of these people that deal with it generally speaking they can be loners or they can be people that don't have many people in their social circle so they're isolated in a way that means the general public aren't exposed to it 
you know because mm-hmm. if these people had loads of friends uh strong family connections and all this stuff and they were going through this then a lot of more people would be aware of the situation uh, but you don't understand yeah. how many resources that takes so like okay i'll give you an example yesterday um i went to a call about someone who punched a bus driver no he was refusing to get off a bus refusing to get off a bus that's the information i've got mm. someone's refusing to get off the bus he's the only person on the bus he's refusing to get off i get there i get there a bit late someone got there before me and they got there and they had to pull out the taser on the guy to try and get him off this bus didn't shoot him but i had to put him put him out like because this, basically as soon as we got there this guy just started trying to punch punch everyone he punched the bus driver okay. already. He's trying to fight everybody. He's basically just going crazy, right? Mm. Um, so obviously he gets restrained and blah, blah, blah. And I realize this guy's probably taken way too many drugs. Like, this is what's wrong with this guy. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Because he's just not making any sense. His eyes are all, like, constricted and, you know, a bit. He just doesn't know what he's talking about. Keeps telling me he wants to help people. Oh, I just want to help people. Mm. I just want to help people. I'm like, okay, like, what have you taken? Like, what's wrong? Blah, blah, blah. Sit him in the back of the car, bro. Eventually calm him down. We thought, like, he didn't have capacity. Like, basically, the guy, the bus driver didn't want to support. Like, he said, look, I get it. He's on drugs. He probably didn't want to mean to punch me or whatever. I'm not really interested in taking him to court about this, blah, blah, blah. Fine. If he, but if the victim isn't supporting, then we're not doing anything about it in a, mm. in, a, in the nicest way. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, we can't take him to yeah. court if there's no victim. Um, yeah. So... <clears throat> So we thought, okay, we'll just sort of give him a lift away from the area so that he can calm down a bit and not be like this. But in the car, bro, he just starts kicking off, bro. So I was trying to break the car. Mm. Like, all of a sudden, just starts kicking the chairs, like, trying to fight everybody. So, bro, I had to get a van to put him in the back of a van. And then he starts complaining Mm. of chest pains and he's coughing. And I'm thinking... Bro, I'm using all of my strength to try and hold this guy down because what he's doing is he's rocking so violently back and forward that he's smashing yeah. his. He's trying to. Well, he didn't actually do it because I stopped him, but he's trying to smash his head on the floor on the walls. So I wow. don't know who this guy is, right? I don't know what can, what mental health issues he might have, what he's taken. I don't know what his health conditions are, but he's coughing mm. loads. He's completely filthy. You know, he stinks mm. of urine, everything on him. And, bro, all of that goes out the window because all you have to do is make sure this guy doesn't kill himself in your care, you know. Mm. So I'm holding yeah. on to him. Like, I'm holding on to his head with all my body so he doesn't smash his head. I'm literally trying everything I can do. Um, mm. And I know on, on camera and on a lot of, you know, from the outside perspective, you think, oh, look at that, that's police brutality. Or that's, mm. the, look how many people it takes to deal with that person. Bro, I beg you, try and restrain me. Like you on your own and me trying to restrain me. If I'm just kicking and wailing, yeah. and I, do you know what I mean? It's going to take a lot of people to do that. Do you know what I'm trying mm. to say? Like that's the reality. And a lot of the time, it takes a lot of people. Is so it can be done safely. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Because yeah. if I'm holding his legs and someone else is holding his arms, then who's holding his head? Yeah, yeah. you know. If you just want to like knock him out, then yeah, that's it a takes one story. person. No, but this yeah, person yeah. is trying to actively harm themselves, whether they want to or not. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And whether that's through a drug induced you know whatever or not mm. but what i'm trying what the ultimate point i was trying to say is that it got to the point where there was four of us with this person and then two paramedics arrived so there was four of us and the paramedics right with one person who we could argue has done this in a self-inflicted way like taking too many drugs mm. and alcohol and now is and that those four people and four officers and two paramedics those are three vehicles in total then had to go into a bed in the hospital in A&E, right? So yeah. that's one bed taken up, four officers, two paramedics, obviously an ambulance as well, um, for the space of two hours, right? How many officers did I say were available the other night? There were seven for the mm. night. So that's four taken up with that one person. Th- things are still carrying mm. on. So what I'm trying to say is that things are still happening. What I'm trying to say is when I'm angry with people not taking initiative and and... And you know when they're told to isolate or told to take precautions, and they're being blasé about it. That's why I'm saying that because it's all well and good now where things are fine. But when there's nobody to help you later, hmm. then what do you do? You know, and people take things for granted because they're so comfortable. You know, they haven't. Yeah, the general yeah. people haven't put themselves in positions or haven't experienced positions, don't expose themselves to stuff that much. 
I would say that Muslims in general have the benefit of being so connected closely with their fellow Muslims in country in war torn countries or places of famine that actually yeah. when they when they see that when they see what's happening to them now they can say oh subhanallah this must be what the Syrians are feeling like or this must be mm. what the people in Somalia exactly, feel like or these people in such and such country feel like you know what I mean that's immediately yeah. what I thought I don't know about you and I'm sure a lot of Muslims felt like that like subhanallah mm. this must be what it's like but for, for a lot of people they're not used to that they start thinking about World War 2 bro they start thinking, oh, this must mm. be what my great, 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 whatever thought, or, like when in World War One or Two mm. or whatever it is, and they can't even relate to that because that's so distant, you know. Yeah. Whilst we're seeing Syria now, bro, we're seeing these situations now. So mm. you know, and, and at least the Muslims that one or Islam in general teaches us about having, ham, you know, saying Alhamdulillah, having this element of gratitude um, for the little things in yeah. life, you know, and that's part of our day to day sort of thing. So yeah, I mean, ultimately what's the what's the concern what you know if people are hoarding food or if they are constantly checking for updates about this thing what are they trying to do with that you know or you're trying to what is it i don't want to i don't know i don't want to get the virus why or so i don't die but you're gonna die Mm. so that's that yeah and then it's like you know i mean it's like uh if you really think about it, Yanni, I don't know. We're just gonna die, I'm, man, I'm, and we're gonna I mean, die bro, pretty soon. You know, I don't know if you, if it's in the Quran. I'm, I feel like it is, or at least the the idea of it is mentioned in the Quran, or oh, it's a hadith. Mm. But regarding, you know, when the the, the literal the literal last day comes, and there's there's mm-hmm. gonna be people still like, you know, about to have a bite to eat. You know, there's still. I can't remember where I read it, but it's like someone will be. Um, literally about to put a morsel in their mouth like life is mm-hmm. still going on and the, and the last yeah. the, ever, you know the final basically the trumpet will be blown right mm-hmm. and and this reminded me of that this situation reminded me of that because it shows you that with the human the human uh, condition is that no matter how bad it gets bro people mm. will still people will still find the ability to be ignorant yeah I mean? of course people yeah. still unfortunately that's the that is the na- that is the default state of the of the mm. human, I suppose. Mm. Unfortunately, because yeah, bro, if you said to people, you know, there's a, I don't know, there's some sort of toxic gas cloud in the air, and if you step outside, you will instantly die. You know, yeah. If even if you said that, there will still be dead mm. bodies, bro. Like I, I fully believe it because there will just mm, yeah, be no people doubt. trying to, I don't know, just. Uh, and it's a problem. People don't heed any warnings. People don't heed any mm. advice. People don't think about others. Mm. On top, like the most thing, like you know, you see movies about these all oh, humanity coming together, and we all sort of flipping sing kumbaya, and we defeat all odds. Oh, mm. that's not the real world, bro. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. like the world is made up yeah. of very selfish people mm. or ignorant mm. people, or you know. The interesting thing, though, is that many countries are facing this. Yeah, and he, it's affecting many countries in the same way and i think it's it's like one of the first times i can think of where everyone's kind of touched in a similar way you know yeah definitely um, and the funny thing as well is that it's a lot of the more quote unquote developed countries that have issues with it um i don't know if they just haven't been really testing much but like africa doesn't have much at all yeah some people are saying that um it's because of like the climate there um the lack of tourism yeah. anyway you know, people stopped traveling yeah. before they could Allah I don't know yeah Allah at this point but people still learn I'll tell you something they? interesting as well yeah if you look at the correlation between the countries that dealt with this very well um versus you know those that didn't yeah yeah those that dealt with it very well like uh Taiwan Singapore South Korea yeah. uh China yeah what do they all have in common They've got not one democracy in sight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and there's yeah. also this element of obedience in the general populace. Anyway, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like a, it's like three things coming together. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of uh, authoritarian style government plus a culture of kind of uh, obedience, compliance. Yeah. Plus, um, uh, what was the other one? Um, Anyway, yeah, those two things basically. Yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, plus a um, very, uh, a very orderly 
country uh, kind of culture yeah. where it's like things are organized and people uh, appreciate things being organized like japan i yeah. think is like one of the most organized places on on the planet yeah. earth and that's where like if you look at iran iran is quite authoritarian as yeah. far as i know yeah. but maybe they're not orderly they don't have that in their culture yeah. to be orderly yeah. and so maybe that's why iran is suffering but yeah. if you look at all the countries that are like kind of dealing with it quite well it's like the type of place where it's like you just follow and you just do yeah. you know I mean, reality um, is and they've been very proactive maybe because they're authoritarian they've been able to be proactive yeah, exactly as well. exactly you know i mean look at uh, uae very proactive mm. um so yeah, well, uh, UAE is a place where, uh, yes, authoritarian and orderly, quite an orderly place as well. Mm. Um, as for the people being compliant, I mean, there's a mixture of people here. Um, I think there's quite a lot of trust in the government here, so that's a reason to comply. Um, but also, I think just a lot of people are, I, I don't know if I should say this, but I feel like people are willing to listen here because they they want to hold on to the dunya. So they're like, okay... I absolutely don't want to get this. I don't want to make things worse. I like I like my life and I want it to continue yeah. as, as it was going. So let me just follow what I'm being told. <laughs> oh, bro. Let's, I mean, now that you mention that, let's take a, a, a second to talk about the people that are, the Muslims that are like, oh, I don't care. I'm going to go to the masjid anyway. Do you know what I mean? I'm still going to see my brothers, mm. you know, because I... I mean, that was me, to be honest, yeah. bro. Like... Like okay, they they closed the masjid here maybe a week ago, and I was going to the masjid um, until then. Yeah, you know? I but my uh, reason was I was like, uh, firstly, there's not many cases in the country as far as I know. Yeah. Secondly, my belief is that if it was going to be a real threat, the masjid, yeah, people praying together every single you know five times yeah. a day. Um, then they would have closed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why when they closed them, I'm like, okay, then I guess they know what they're doing, so I won't go. Of and course. Stuff. I think, yeah. the, the, but in in England, there's more freedom yeah, exactly. for the messenger to choose say. to close That's or not. Yeah. Say. So in England, the the messenger mas- generally they're going to make that decision themselves. Um, it's not something that you can put the trust in the government to do, unless it gets to yeah. a point where they say, "Oh yeah, all religious places need to close, or whatever." And by then, yeah. it's probably too late. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, true. But um, yeah, it's it's just the ignorance of people. Like, there's two things that are really annoying me at the moment, right? It's that element of it because no one wants to tie their camel because suddenly oh they're all you know they're all uh, you know they all have this inc- incredible so attached tawakal, to the masjid and yeah they've got this incredible tawakal in Allah which they should have but but they mm. still need to tie their camel right yeah take yeah. the means the other thing that's irritating me to to oh my god to this to the moon and back is conspiracy theorists just coming out of the woodwork bro people saying that oh this is man made it was made by the elites to wipe us out. Like stuff like this just infuriates. I was actually me, listening to a podcast, um, kind of about that today. I, I didn't get very far, but yeah, bro, it infuriates. I mean, honestly, me, bro, bro uh, I, I, I don't know what you think about that, but I think it's, uh, it's a possibility, right? Maybe there's no proof that I've seen that it's, it's true. Yeah, but for me, it doesn't make much difference. I if think it was man-made. I think or my, not. I think you know, I used to get very caught up in the conspiracy <laughs> theories when I was younger. I yeah. really By the way, bro, next episode is conspiracy theory episode. Sounds How good about to that? me. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I used to get really like heavily, deeply in, engaged in conspiracy theories to the point yeah. where I literally just, you know, I had a very, very different worldview. Um, and then what I realized, bro, is as I got older and um, you know, I work in, in in environments that I've never, I'd never thought I would before, and I've seen things I've never thought I would before. You realize that actually the big boogeyman that you often mm. consider as a big boogeyman is human too. You're right. Yeah. He's human too. They have the same flaws. They have the same sort of needs. They have the same desires as me and you. Do you understand? They want to live. Mm. They want to see their families in a the day. They don't mm. have. Their plans fail as their well. Their plans right? fail, and they <laughs> like don't have plans, yeah. you know they don't have these plans that have been cooking for millennia. Do you understand? Mm. Like people live and die, bro. You don't get it, bro. It's about the bloodline, bro. <laughs> this is what I mean, bro. Do it's been understand? passed through the bloodline for centuries, oh, bro. Nobody cares that long about anything but themselves. Like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? In a sense that even the Quran mm. spoke about you think that they're together, but they're not. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Like you, yes. we we think that we think that these these elites or these people behind these uh, you know uh, I don't mm. know secret societies or whatever that are doing all this stuff. Oh, we think that look at them, look at the power they've got, look at the stuff they're doing, look at how the way they're controlling the world. No, they're also at each other's throats. 
You know, there may be mm. people like that. There may be people trying to sway decisions and politics and whatever, but they're also at each other's throats, you know, because mm. there is, a, you think that they're more united than we should be? They're not. Nobody is. You know, mm. if we're not united on one thing that doesn't change ever, then they're definitely not united on things that they can make up every day. Do you understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? Mm. Like, we've got mm. things that doesn't that don't change. Like, we've got the Quran that doesn't change. For example, that's like the number prime example. Like we can all say whatever disagreement mm. we've got, we can all say, okay, we agree on this Quran, like its contents, and, and, and it comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's Allah's speech. You understand? Although you know there are people that say that it's not, but anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> they don't count. Though. Yeah, but <laughs> they don't count. <laughs> but at the same time, just what I'm trying to say. But we, we, you're worried about people that don't have allegiance to anything concrete. So mm. their, their, their opinions, their desires, whatever it is, they can backstab each other tomorrow. They can have different, you know, feelings, emotions, mm. you know, whatever it is, bro. The selfishness, mm-hmm. the greed takes over. Um, yeah. There isn't this, like, um, I don't know, overarch, overarching mission of, like, the promised, you know, I don't know what you want to call it. But so, mm. so, Having said that, though, um, there are, like, governments will... Um, I don't know if taking advantage is the right word, but they will implement certain measures from now, yeah. which will take um, freedom and privacy away from citizens. That's true, isn't it? Yeah, to some extent. But at the same time, at the same time, we live in a world where it's almost it's almost a given like that's going to happen because yeah. You, you can, look, but this, people this can thing, actively, this kind of thing speeds it up. Yeah, yeah. people can actively make choices today. But they want to have their mm. cake and eat it too, and I think that's what annoys me. Like people that are worried about like net new, not net neutrality. God, I'm just throwing out keywords now that don't don't actually match <laughs> up. <laughs> but like they're t- they're worried about like their data protection and their data online and this and that, and then mm. you know they're worried about GDPR. all of that. Yeah, all of that stuff. They're worried about that. <laughs> but at the same time, they actively participate in the things that put those at risk. Like when you sign up to any sort of uh, I don't know for any sort of account in anywhere. They're mm. not guaranteed that they're going to be secure. They could get mm. hacked tomorrow, like it has been. You know, I went. There was this. There's this website. I can't remember what it's called, but it's very interesting. You can put your email address into this website, and it tells yeah. you. It, it basically runs through and sees if your email address has been a victim of um, mm. of what's the word uh, like uh, data breaches in the past. Yeah. Now I've yeah. got. I put in my re, my current email, and I think I had two breaches for some things that I don't really care about. Right, mm. I put in my old email address that I still exists. I don't use it, but when I occasionally check it because certain things are still linked to it, like my, I don't know, like my old, like my one of my old game consoles is linked to it. So if I get something on there, the receipt goes to this old email. Anyway, yeah, when I go into that email address, it's just full of spam, bro, like full mm. of spam. So I yeah. checked it, and it came up with like thirty breaches, bro from like all mm. these different companies and it gives you like the article the news article about the breach so like when there was a breach i think recently with virgin media or something like that uh and you know that it kind of gets swept under the rug but these are breaches where people have taken your account information where you live whatever yeah you know and it, this told me mm. where all the breaches were and what they were mm. and what came out of it and how my email has ended up in these people's hands. that's why bro you have to use last pass that- now this episode of mine has sponsored by LastPass, the <laughs> number one place to go to get your password needs met. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, but see, but, see but I, it is good to use something like that. See what I'm trying to say, though? Like, yeah. our, our fears are like, we want to live, the, we want to we want to buy the dunya, but we don't want to, mm. we don't, we want to buy it on our terms. And it comes with its risks, bro. It comes with its risks. Yeah, I suppose everyone's always wish, wishing for both like in theory you can get both i think like for example what the example you gave of like um giving your email address and then the security side yeah um i think if if uh, you forced uh, companies to implement certain security things you use like a uh, two factor authentication or whatever yeah. and these things like that could work but you do have areas where it's harder for example um having cameras everywhere versus privacy like so the cameras help obviously with the policing yeah, yeah, yeah. but then privacy is gone and that's something where it is one or the other isn't yeah, it? like yeah. you either have the cameras or you don't you can have i guess certain laws and certain protections but but yeah, yeah. but bro if you think about it now yeah china seems to have really done well with this corona thing and one of the a couple of the ways that they went about it is they used their i think 600 million cameras they have in the country yeah and they also 
uh, I believe they're able to track individual people using their phone number because their f- their SIM card is linked to their personal ID. Right. So if they want to know, uh, they, they know somebody has corona and they were in contact with these five people, now they could track where those five people are now and go and get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now that is a crazy invasion of privacy. Yeah. But look, but then China will say, "Look, look what we did. You know, we we could have we had eighty thousand cases. We could have been in huge trouble. We got one point five yeah, billion people yeah. in our country. But they're like, look, like it works. You know, you guys talk about all your democracy and rights, but look what we did this year. Yeah. Italy, you you guys are suffering now. Yeah, and then maybe Italy will turn around and say, look, well, we're finally over this virus. You know, it's over. Uh, I don't know how you say Alhamdulillah in Italian. Yeah, <laughs> but." Uh, they'll be like, look, you see, the Chinese did sick. We need the, some of them cameras now. Yeah, we yeah, need that course, face course, recognition, course, you know. But you, the thing and is, that's, bro, when that's when the the bloodline comes, bro. <laughs> but at the same time, bro, like it's not it's not far fetched that that is a, maybe a necessity to combat certain problems. Do you understand? Like mm. you know, when when we when when the police have got cameras here, like police cameras, not just like you know i don't know marcus and spencer's a cctv camera i'm talking about the ones that can be moved and, and actually you know there are rules oh. that that circulate those there are things that are abided by that can't be yes for example you can't just follow someone you can't yeah there's rules like you, you can if you've got the legislation to support you in terms of the grounds which you have mm. to apply for in a court like a warrant yeah, yeah exactly to to conduct surveillance on somebody right mm. and that means like surveillance bro that's like hiding in the bushes bro that's like following <laughs> them in secret like do you understand you know okay that, i'm talking about like on a long-term basis but yeah you know for example the cameras that you see so if you ever see a police camera in town or anywhere in the uk anyway it doesn't stay fixed on one point forever it keeps rotating mm. that's because it can't mm. just it can't it's they're not allowed to just focus on one thing do you understand mm. they're not allowed to just yeah, focus yeah. on one spot the only time that changes dynamically, and I say dynamically, is if something happens or something is seen, and then it, and then there's grounds to now start following an, an incident that's unfolding. Do you understand? Mm. For example, mm. the camera is is doing its rotations, right? And then it and it and as there's someone obviously looking at the camera, but as it um, as soon as it gets the the person starts controlling it. You know, it's in front of the camera. It starts recording. Mm. You know, it starts mm. recording this person's actions. What is he watching? Whatever, and then that can be dick checked, and then there's accountability to it. But right, okay. but at the same mm. time, um, yeah. Let's say okay. Suddenly, you can see uh, you know someone getting uh, the handbag snatched. Okay, that camera's mm. going to now stop monitoring this person because it has the grounds mm. to it can justify doing so. Do you understand everything? Yeah. And that's yeah, one yeah. thing about you know British police in general, which people, I'll be honest, like. Uh, the world looks at British policing with with admiration because of what they the 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 um, reputa- hands off approach. Yeah, and the a reputation that they've built for themselves. Like it, mm. it, it is. And I'm not saying this because you know my bias, but it is one of the best police forces in the world. Because yes, there are incidents of, of you know of mistakes and, and 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 brutality and whatever. Because that's a mm. those are what we say or I would say is the same as um, mm. when very similar to when there are Muslims that commit heinous crimes as well. Like, there's bad apples in each group, right? Yeah. There are people that are going to listen to this and say, oh, the whole institution is bad and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Well, well, if the whole institution is bad, then you just want to live in a lawless society. Someone has to do that job. Whatever yeah, yeah. country you're sometimes, in. Sometimes, bro, to be honest, I think sometimes I feel like the British is too soft. Sometimes, exactly. But this is what I mean. Like, mm. you know, mm. some people, like I've spoken to Americans before and they were like, what do you mean you don't all carry guns? Like, What's that about? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you understand yeah, what I'm yeah. trying to say? Like, what do you do? I was like, well, I have a stick and I have a spray. And What's that going to do? Well, that, <laughs> you'd be surprised. Spray. You make it sound <laughs> very bad. <laughs> That's the reality, isn't it? Like, what else have we got? <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. not saying that we don't have, you know, if we need firearms, and you've seen, obviously it's been in the news, you see that there's people with firearms that need to go out. For, yeah. But the way that, this all comes back to what I was saying earlier, people just take things for granted. They just don't know how good they've got it. Yeah. How can you have, yeah. how can you honestly have a president? I'm not trying to praise the, the prime minister. I don't really have any feeling towards him, whatever. But I'm just talking about the fact of the matter. How can you have a prime minister that says, that comes to the podium and advises you to stay in your homes in a nice way, Right, during an outbreak mm. that's killing thousands of people, whilst you've got other yeah. countries saying if you don't come out, of your, if you come out of your home today, you're getting fined a thousand pounds, or you're going to prison, or whatever. Do you understand? Yeah. And I'm sure there's yeah. countries that would just beat the crap out of you mm. <laughs> for doing so. Bro, did you see? I saw a video. Yeah, Morocco. Um, 
there was police chasing people down the street with sticks. Bro, <laughs> and they sit. were like actually hitting them. Bro. They're like, get inside, get inside. Sit. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But no, we're too busy uh, flipping and having walks down the beach and, and, and singing Kumbaya and, and, and yeah, throwing yeah. parties, you know, unofficial mm. parties outside. And mm. we just, it's just insane, bro, because mm. it's like, honestly, it's like it's like babies, bro. It's like dealing with babies that aren't well behaved. And it's, yeah, it's, it's difficult honestly, to strike it's like a balance. That. It's difficult to strike a yeah. balance. And, you know, I just want to say a disclaimer like, all of these views are my own <laughs> that are representing yeah. what I work for. <laughs> but it's just yeah. the reality. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is yeah. the times we're living in. And, yeah, but you know, one thing that I, I has come up for me, you know, talking now with you is how much prevention is better than cure, you know, um, because all of these issues you're talking about that you're dealing with, domestic this, violence this, burglaries that, ultimately, um, preventing that would be much better, much more effective, mm. right? Oh yeah. Um, you would you would rather to to lower just lower those incidents or the opportunities for those incidents to happen. Yeah. And you do that through. Uh, I guess, bro, it's like com- like a real community, meaning uh, more close relationships between, you know, people on average. Yeah. And then, like, I guess a sense of responsibility towards the, either the people you know or the area that you live in, yeah, you know, a yeah, sense yeah. of real responsibility. And that kind of is the opposite of individualism, isn't it? Yeah. So that, that's why the way you construct your society, the culture you build, the values you build into the society will dictate things to the level of like how much you have to invest in policing, how much you have to invest in healthcare. Yeah. You know, because remember, if you have a, a culture of eating healthy, for example, that's going to reduce your healthcare budget yeah. because you have less obesity, less diabetes, less this, less that. So prevention is just... Honestly, you know, vastly superior culture. Culture building is is like you said is literally the solution to all mm. these issues. And you know, as Muslims, we've got that because yeah. nothing built our culture more than Islam. You know, yes, nothing yes. shapes us more than that. And that's mm. why you know how many days uh, have said it. You know, how many street days have said it to non-Muslims about this being the solution to all of their problems, bro. You know, mm. every night I go out, or every day I go out to work, and every situation I go to, and every job I go to could have been solved by by practicing Islam. You know, to its mm. fullest, everything. Yeah, like Allah everything. Allah. There's nothing that I see that I think this couldn't have been solved through some either mm. party, or one of the parties, or both parties practicing Islam to yeah. the fullest. Yeah. Like, and some of the, maybe some of the minor, more minor ones, like you know, arguments between a couple, or you know, these kind of things. Maybe that, maybe it will always have a level of that, of right? Of course, but even and that, may, and you can't, you can't like babysit people and and, and force them to be good with each other. Of but course. you can. I'm sure a lot of what you deal with is to do with uh, drugs and alcohol, isn't it? A lot of the time, yeah, drugs, alcohol, mental health, um, and and it's a cycle. Like it might not directly be influenced by that, but actually, if you look along the line, that's part of the reason. Yeah. For example, like if you've got theft and stuff, well, actually, mm. it's to fuel this addiction or it's to do this. Or yes, that. exactly. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, you know, the you know, to actually get um, like a clean theft or a clean you know burglary where somebody actually hasn't got any addictions, or whatever, it's actually rarer than the others. Like predominantly, mm. your shoplifters your robberies or whatever is generally either people f- trying to fuel addictions or it's between like gang members obviously in in, in gangs that mm. are involved in drugs anyway you know um so things like that bro things like that um mm. handle fortunately like i mean yes we do have gang issues we do have drug issues we have very big drug issues where i am um but obviously i don't live in the capital so i'm sure mm. they've got way more issues in terms of that sort of scenario Mm. Um, interestingly as well yeah yeah turkey has very few cases yeah right i'm not sure why that is that's interesting um jordan is complete lockdown like there's no one allowed out if you i think they said yeah this is how harsh they went yeah forget i mean i know the i think it's the in france they were giving out big fines to people who leave the house without a reason and stuff in jordan they said if you're out the house one year jail (laughs) <laughs> that is mad that's harsh um morocco we already said in algeria i know they closed the masjid um i don't know if they did too much beyond that yeah, yeah um yeah. but let me ask you yeah where would you rather be you know while this is going on would you rather be in the uk where you know the nhs is quite good yeah. um you know decent facilities but then again you know the kind of people you're surrounded with there versus tunisia 
it, you know, I've been ba- I've been bouncing between it, and you know what, my father is in that situation now, because yeah. so I I managed to get my father to come out to the UK before it got like the way it is now. Um, mm. uh, I I wanted him to basically get some to have a basically he he's not he's not entirely well, but he, I wanted him to sort of see some doctors here and stuff. Not about this virus, separate issue. But I, either way, now that he's here, he's sort of trapped here, and I my mum told me that he said to her. Oh, if I was in Tunisia, I'd be thinking about you guys. I'd want to be with you. But now that I'm here, I can't stop thinking about the family back in Tunisia. You know, where mm. would I want to be? Um, now, yeah, you've got the NHS here, and it's you know you're not paying anything for it. But you've also got people that are like on top of each other, like living wise. Like people are just you can't get away from people. Do you understand? But at the same time, there's places like that in Tunisia. Like I don't know where you're from in Algeria, but at least in Tunisia, obviously, if you live in the capital, you're going to be in the same boat. You know, but mm-hmm. in my rural area in Tunisia, I have thought sometimes maybe I'm safer in a rural area in Tunisia where I'm not going to be in contact with that many people. Mm. You know, as long as I keep because if you practice the hygiene things that you have here, mm-hmm. like so, okay, let's talk about hand sanitizer. That, that's rubbish. Like that's not going to do anything. I mean, it will, but you're not going to get that over there very easily, are you? But you wash your hands. Just understand, like cover your mouth. Stay away from people. You can do that in Tunisia. You know, you can do that in a rural area in an Arab country quite well. Do you know what I mean? Mm. As long as you're clean, you actively keep clean. Because at least where I live, like you can you can be in an area where I live and look around and there's nobody on the horizon. <laughs> do you understand mm. what I'm trying to say? Like mm. I'm far from <laughs> people, and it reminds me maybe of a how, few sheep. <laughs> exactly, it reminds me of how like in Mecca in the old days they used to send the kids out to um, the desert to sort of stay away from the diseases of yeah. that, that people are bringing into Mecca and, and the, you know the grime of it all and um, stuff like that so yeah it's a, it's a tough one to be in at the end of the day we mm. are where we are and this is Qadr Allah and this is where we are yeah <laughs> yeah because it just made me think like uh, in the UK people are like panic buying and all that over here no one's panic buying right yeah. and I'm just, I'm just, I was wondering to myself, you know, okay, if we had, you know, thousands of cases over here, how would people be acting, you know, because obviously here there's, uh, who knows, maybe 60, 70% Muslims here, maybe more, I'm not sure. So would, would you find that, that, you know, those Muslim values would kick in? Would you find people being more considerate? Personally, I do think you would, you know, Um, my, my wife told me about somebody who put a uh, you know a little note through through letterbox okay in the UK and they said you know hi my name is so so I live down the road from you if you need any you know help then you know, I'm here just call me okay yeah, if yeah. you need help with getting supplies yeah and they they call them and then she's charging people yeah yeah, yeah. like <laughs> so I'm that's not unfathomable I, I know okay the average person in the UK pr- who does that they probably wouldn't be charging but that that is unbelievable like that's unfathomable in in the Muslim world you know yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know I, honestly I don't know where a better place to be is I feel like yes uh, for example Algeria people yeah they would be more maybe caring for each other and stuff but ultimately I'm really not sure I'm really not sure I think there'll be more element of togetherness over there bro yeah, I think people will look after each other more over there. But because... the th- definitely, people look after each other more. Definitely, but on the flip side, maybe people listen to the rules less as well. What, over there, so maybe it would spread more. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like the fear there is more with stuff like this. I think well, it should be anyway. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I think because people are used to not having healthcare around them, and they're used hmm. to 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 having to. You know, like okay, there's how many t- times do you get like told, oh, don't go out with you know with your hair wet, or don't sleep <laughs> under the moon, or don't. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like stuff like this, bro. Like at least where I grew, yeah. up, grew up. So it's like, yeah, there's gonna be like all these things. Like, oh, don't do this, don't do that. This can happen to you. That can happen to you. Mm, so that's a good point. I've always yeah. had that. Like, I I don't know if this is <laughs> to the point where I, even now I'm like, I don't even know if this was based on any sort of science or if it was just an old wives' tale. But I used to sleep yeah. on the roof in the house oh. but like under oh. the moonlight and they yeah. used to say if you do that you wake up with your face like twisted and bro even <laughs> till this day i'm like is that oh. based on any sort of science or was i just told that <laughs> just, i don't know about that <laughs> one you bro. Know what i mean like <laughs> so yeah. so stuff like that bro so mm. from, at least where i come from like mm. yeah they say oh yeah don't do that because this is gonna happen oh okay okay i won't do you know mm. what i mean and that's that's, that's what, true bro i never thought of 
why where that kind of uh, attitude comes from of being very careful because you would think like mediterranean culture is a little bit care carefree in some right? issues yeah but, yeah but, but when it comes to this it's very um the, like uh, ocd yeah that's but what it's I would still call got it. this element of superstition bro and a lot of it is also based mm. on the fact similarly mm. with the fear that america has because like i said anywhere that doesn't have pro- that, that all healthcare is private essentially means people mm. are scared to get ill because yes. they can't pay and they can't afford and, yeah, yeah, and especially yeah, yeah. where I live like you're far away from like if you're getting an ambulance bro you're waiting an hour for the ambulance to get there mm. standard mm. it's got to come from a completely yeah. different town so this is what I mean like people are scared to be in positions where they can't help themselves you know yeah 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 so it's interesting bro I think I, I was thinking this any kind of difficult time I feel like that's where the true morals and ethics show, you know. Yeah. So just how, just how atheists, I know that these, uh, you know, uh, what what would you call them? These uh, fools, maybe. Ooh. <laughs> um, th- th- these atheists uh, speakers and stuff, you know, they think they're so smart and stuff. They come and they'll debate and all of that, and they will try to say that you can be atheist and be a completely moral, ethical person. Yeah. Um, at the same time, you don't need religion for ethics, they say, right? Yeah. Personally, bro, I think this is that's all good and well in good times. Yeah, when exactly. there's 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 order, yep. there's a law and order, yep. there's food, there's everything's fine. When things get a bit chaotic, I think that's when it really shows the morals. Yeah. Because ultimately, you know, if you don't believe in Yom al Qiyamah and any kind of accountability, Ultimately, bro, instinctively, it's all about your own survival, yeah. maybe your family survival, right? Yeah. That's that's where your that's where your mind goes, right? Yeah. But the one who sees beyond the material world and they think of the the Yom al Qiyamah, they think of Allah, they have the trust in Allah. That that makes you do. Um, although people, you, you know, I, I might call it irrational, but obviously it's the rational thing to course, do if bro. you believe in the Yom, yom al Akhira, Yom al Qiyamah is is you end up doing these things which are irrational yeah. you know uh, but it's the right thing to do it's like the story of the i think it was Ghazwat uh, Badr i think where you know a lot of the companions i think it was after the battle they were they were you know injured and and they're very thirsty and they're passing the water around they've got this cup of water and each one doesn't want to drink it they want to pass it to the one next to them and they keep passing until it goes all around the circle and the first one had died from from the thirst or the exhaustion or yeah. whatever. Right. And so that, you could say, like, that's uh, irrational, yeah? Like, that's that's dumb. Like, at uh, uh, least save yourself. Like, you know, you pass it on, and everyone's passing it on, you're all going to die, right? The truth is, though, if you see the ghaib, and you believe in the the, the speech of the Prophet ﷺ to be as real or more real than what you see in front of your eyes, then that is the rational thing to do. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, None of you truly believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And so by putting that uh, hadith into action, you're now doing the most rational thing based on believing that is the ultimate truth what the Prophet ﷺ said. And now you've died, inshallah, as somebody who truly believes, isn't it? It's going back to that little bit, you, you, you know, it reminded me of like being domesticated in a way like the the, the comfort and the, the luxury that we live in is domesticating us to the point like you know you see a lion in a cage bro and if it's being fed and if it's being you know in a zoo if it's being fed and stuff mm. it's chilling bro it's not eyeing mm. up the, the the people that are in the park like, <laughs> yeah. like pieces of meat but if you don't feed that lion from for like a week or two weeks or however long they they get hungry for bro it's gonna start yeah. trying that to reach for those people out there do you know what I mean? Like yeah. suddenly, it's now it needs to survive, bro. You know, yeah. now it's acting crazy. So, yeah, Subhanallah. Yeah, and I think, I think honestly, bro, like we we like you said, we got comfortable. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, when I say we, it's only like I don't know twenty percent of the world, thirty percent of the world. Yeah. a lot of the world is still living in a a more you know a less comfortable less secure lifestyle you know but for for us who have become very comfortable it's actually become a, a, a handicap for us because when things go back to normal like because living in like so much comfort is not normal when things go to normal then you feel very exposed don't you yeah i think there's going to be a lot uh, of changes in society after this bro you know I yeah think there's going to be big shifts i think mm. um you know i mean people are getting laid off work but i think also businesses are going to realize that they don't need buildings to sustain their business 
they're going to be like, mm. well, oh, look, people are working from home and we're still working. And actually, mm. look at the money that we've real, real estate apocalypse. Yeah, we don't need offices. So, Why don't we just make people work on their own internet? You know, yeah, and then and then yeah. punish them if they fail to to get you know mm. to meet the deadlines, meet the deadlines and stuff. or whatever. Um, mm. You know, like there is. I know it's a bit. I don't know. It's a bit archaic, but there are jobs in the organization I work for that I think I not me personally, but other people that work in the organization who aren't frontline. I'm like well actually why do you need to even be here like mm. literally we you know even if people are in the same office or like uh, you know on the floor above we still call them we still like ring mm. them on the phone and they're f- so why can't we just the reason being is obviously because of security and, and and you know securing okay. information and stuff and and being able to access networks from a secure location but you know some of the measures they were talking about at work at the moment is like okay if people get if people get it they're told to or people need to go to isolation then isolation is different than being off sick right if you've got it mm. you're going to be off sick but if you're in isolation you don't know if you have it or not or you're at risk mm. of it but in isolation you can still work and they've come yeah. up with genius ways of us continuing to work from home for example mm. we've got work phones that are all secure and stuff but what you can do with that work phone is plug it into a little dongle that they can give you and then you can blow it up onto the tv and mm. use it as like a computer. It basically hooks into their firmware or hooks into the software that we use for work. Suddenly you've got mm. access and you're, and then that can be authorized by someone over there. Somewhere, you know, somewhere in the headquarters or wherever can say, oh yeah, so-and-so is working from home today. I'll give him access, such and such, boom. They yeah, can, can work. Yeah. And, and obviously, as you can imagine, everything is monitored. Like every keystroke mm. we do is watched, like is recorded, mm. you know. So you can't do anything dodgy. You can't search anything dodgy. You can't search up anybody for no reason. Do you understand? Without mm. a, a, a justifiable purpose. So everything we do is monitored. So I'm used to that kind of, like that way of living, you know. <laughs> I'm used yeah, to being yeah. watched, <laughs> so yeah. which, to be honest, is great. You know, mm. I think people don't, don't think about that. They, I think people think that these organisations often look out for themselves. When I don't think they do in a way that people think they do, like employees or whatever people that work for organisations such as this, law enforcement, NHS, whatever. Mm-hmm. The the organisation would rather get rid of you as a problem than take the fall for you because what is it gaining from taking the fall for one person? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like if I did something wrong, right, and I'm talking about like actively did something wrong, not made a mistake, but actively did something wrong, why would the organisation side with me? Mm, Back you up. Why would it back me up when it just ruins its reputation? Surely Mm. it benefits from getting rid of me and making a Mm. loud, loud sort of statement about getting rid of me. Do you understand what I mean? Like, what is it losing? What about Wala or Bara, bro? <laughs> bro, I don't think they're on that no level. No loyalty yet, out here, yeah? <laughs> I don't think they're on that level, bro. But, <laughs> yeah, anyway. I, I know I'm very vague about this topic, and it's only because I'm not 100%, you know. I think he gave some juicy details. Yeah, I'm not bro. 100% sure, like, if I should even be talking about it. But at the same time, I think we live in a... Mm. I think I've got, at least for the Muslim community, you know... I've got insight to things that, let's be real, I'm the only Muslim I know in my organization. <laughs> like in, mm. in in my media, I think there may be some across the county, but as far as the ones that are in my vicinity, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one. I don't think I've seen anyone else. Um, mm. I don't know where, there's a prayer mat and a Quran that were in the um, prayer room and it's gone missing, bro, and I don't know where it's gone. I need to chase that up. <laughs> Mm, I'm really worried, bro, because I feel everything else is still there, but the Quran and the prayer mat have disappeared, and um, and everything is still. Remember, when I, I think I mentioned this before. I said, "Is everything where I left it?" Kind of thing. Like yeah, the yeah. bin is still got my rubbish in it from months ago, like just empty, okay. an empty wrapper or whatever from crisp like, wrappers. Yeah, like clearly the bin <laughs> has the bin bag hasn't been changed. So. Yeah. You know, every Maybe s- they didn't want you coughing in the sajada <laughs> during your sujood. I don't know, bro. I'm just hoping it's not anything more sinister because there are other books in there. Like, obviously, it's a, it's a multi-faith room, so there's, you know, I don't know what the other books are called, bro. Obviously, the Bibles and Torah, but they, there's other books. From, like, <laughs> you know, I don't want to disrespect anyone, but like all of that is still there, bro. But the Quran's missing, the prayer rug's missing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Someone trying to send a message. <laughs> Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah. uh, no, I hope not, and I, I I don't expect that to be mm. the case. 
You know what? I think um, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, what, was, what I want to say is, uh, you know, times like this. Yeah. Obviously, the virus is not as um, it's not as uh, you know a big deal as um, you know, maybe we feel um, in terms of the actual uh, medical, you could say, uh, consequences. Okay. Obviously, people die. That's serious. Um, but people also die every day from other reasons, right? Um, but the, the the economic fallout is going to be mad. And obviously, the economic fallout is going to cause other medical problems, of course, yeah. right? Um, but I think it's a time when big shifts in power structure can happen, yeah. okay? So, for example, if one very developed country doesn't deal with this well, and then a you know a middle country deals with it very well, that could actually change the power dynamics between those two. Definitely. You know? So one country goes down and they, they don't really recover. Whereas the other one, because they're so proactive and they're so on it, they're able to actually go on the offense instead of being in defense for three, four years dealing with this. Definitely, bro. You know? So and that goes the same goes for companies. While uh I don't know, different uh, high street kind of um uh, you know brands are Firing people, ten people to take, you know, days off work. I heard Qatar Airways fired two hundred staff in one day. Crazy. Um, Emirates telling people to take, uh, you know, unpaid leave until further notice. Okay, while that's happening, I heard Amazon n- needs to hire a hundred thousand new people. Subhanallah. Right. Yeah. So you thought Amazon was everywhere now with just I think six percent of e-commerce um, sales going through Amazon today. When we go through, when we come out the other end of this, inshallah, they might have 10%, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a very short time. So I feel like we're in a time where big changes can happen, big shifts can happen. And I was thinking about this, um, I was talk- talking to my wife about this, that like we think like, the way we talk to each other, the way the Muslims did all the futuhat, you know, all the conquests of yeah. different parts of the world, we talk about it as though they were so amazing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. they 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 was they were so good, such good warriors. They had Khalid bin Walid. They had this. They had that, and they had Iman, of course, right? Which all plays a role. But ultimately, Allah says, uh, um, "Allah is the one that that actually causes the victories. It's not us, right?" And um, uh, we might be disappointed in that, like, oh, so it's not like how amazing like the the soldiers were and stuff. Well, it's like, it's different factors, right? But, for example, the Romans, when the Muslims beat the Romans, I remember reading that the Romans were actually under attack from multiple tribes from multiple directions. And then the Muslims came and kind of, that was like the the straw that broke the camel's back, right? They couldn't sustain defending themselves from so many different angles. Now, you could say, oh, so the Muslims weren't actually conquering like one of the most powerful civilizations. And it, it makes you feel less good. But the truth is, Allah obviously wrote that they would be under attack from all those angles. And then Allah timed the rise of Islam perfectly, right? So just how Muslims, you know, uh, as a civilization, as as an ummah, we've been losing out for the past, you know, one, two hundred years. Allah can determine that things shift, you know, very rapidly. Oh, yeah. And and Allahu Akbar, that's all I I can say say about that. I used to say... um, about like the you know obviously we talk about the end times we talk about the dajjal we talk about things like that I remember saying to people like mm. bro next week like next week dajjal could appear like do you understand like what's the, I mm. mean I know there are certain hadith about you know 40 years this happens and signs and times, yeah. but with with some of them it can literally just be like overnight you know mm-hmm. with some signs of, of qiyamah they can literally just happen overnight bro um, yeah so I've always thought like yeah the world can change in a week the world can change mm. in 24 hours. You know what I mean? The world can yeah. change very, yeah. very quickly. And look at this. Mm. like Something like this uh, is unprecedented, really. Like, Especially in an era of globalization. Like, okay, we've heard about the Black Plague. We've heard about, you know, th- things of the past. You know, this, what was it called? Yeah. The Spanish flu or something like Spanish that. Spanish flu, yeah. Yeah, we've heard about those. But a lot of those were isolated because of the, the way the world was. Mm, globalization. Now yeah. globalization, bro. Look how quickly things get everywhere. <laughs> like yeah, everywhere, yeah, bro. Yeah. Everybody hears about everything, you know. And I post a video and look what I'm talking to you, bro. And you're in the UAE, for goodness sakes. Like, this, mm. <laughs> like, this is it. So... The, the world is primed, bro, for big changes. The world is primed for big changes. Yeah. Allah. Yeah. You can't contain the, the change as much at all. No, no way. No way. Yeah, man. Let's do this one quick question, then we'll wrap up. 
oh god we've got part two has been an hour bro so i don't even remember how long we went for part one <laughs> uh oh wow yeah okay yeah i okay. think we're about an hour and 15 in total. juicy anyway this this is a quick one bro, yeah so rashid says salam alaikum just a quick random question do you prefer apple or android <laughs> oh yeah sorry i forgot to reply to that um i didn't know he wanted it answered on the email well, we you? will use it, bro. We'll I take feel like it. you're Android and I'm Apple. Like I just feel like that's the way it is. Is that correct? No, that's that's no. I have an Android phone. Yes, I thought so. Um, but I don't know if that would be my answer. I think that is because you've got one, bro. Okay, because I've got Apple mm. and you've got Android. And I think I, I just, I just sort of, if I was to put us, you know, in see, look at us independently, I'd say yes. You know, AkiTweet is at Apple and Amin is at Android. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. I see you. You know, I had, I had um, Apple. Uh, I had the, you, you know, the three G iPhone. Right. So the first iPhone that came out, it didn't have three G, and then they made another kind of update, and it had three G. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had that one. Yeah, I bought it second hand of someone. Then I had the four S. Then I had the six S. Yeah. So I've, I've had three iPhones. Yeah. Yeah. And now, only now, I have a Samsung. So I was like all oh, Apple, but I was just honestly, I was stuck in the ecosystem. So, and on, honestly, there was no problems with the phones. So of course, I would, I was going to get a new one and a new one. But back then, you know, the iPhone 6S was, I think, 500 pounds. But now the new one's like, you know, 800 pounds or whatever. So anyway, I moved to Samsung because uh, it just seems at least as good as the Apple, yeah. you know. And uh, it was literally half the price. And it's uh, the technology is all pretty much the same. Um, maybe hmm, the software, maybe Apple is slightly, slightly superior. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of, of either like a big fan thing. But I, I, it's hard to justify getting a Apple, I think, iPhone. So yeah, I think it's it is what it is. It's hard, you know, you get locked in, but it's also the most popular. So there's a lot available for it. It just mm -hmm. does what I want it to do. I just don't like how, um, tr like, sort of trapped in the ecosystem I get. I don't like the yeah. lack of fluidity I have available to me. It's any, it's with anything, any sort of digital product mm. you get trapped in the ecosystem, and then you've invested so much into it that you can't. Yeah, you know, yeah, you sunken cost. Yeah, but um, one thing with Apple though, I do, I actually do believe Apple when they say you know they care about privacy and stuff more. Yeah. Um, so, like, obviously, uh, Android is is a Google company or whatever. Right. So Google, you know, is one of the companies in the world carrying the most of your data. Yeah. You know, Pe you know, people talk a lot about Facebook, but Google has maybe equal or more information about you. And when you plug that into your phone, uh, you know, you sign into your email, your your this and that account. Halas, now they track your location and they put it all together. So. Uh, Apple is better in that way, definitely, because I I do kind of believe them when they say they take the privacy seriously. Yeah. What do you use? You know, like at work, they give you phones, right? You said you yeah. said. Do, I bet they use i uh, iPhones, right? No, bro, we use Samsungs. Oh, is it? Yeah, because I, I wonder... think they can be modified more. But mm. then I've heard of other areas use uh, um, Apple iPhones or whatever. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I've got so my work phone's a Samsung S. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. We mm. get new ones. I remember every, back in the day. Years. Back in the day, they used to use BlackBerry because it's supposed to be really secure. Oh, like right, a, yeah. you know, like a company phones and stuff. Yeah. They used to use BlackBerry, but they're kind of dead now. We've got all sorts of like security measures on ours, bro. Like honestly, quite encrypted. Mm. So, yeah, so maybe they. That's why they use it because they can add all that customization. Exactly, yeah. yeah, that's mm. definitely, bro. Like all mm. sorts of stuff, all sorts of tech. Um, mm. Technology is a future, bro. I mean, if we all invest in technology in terms of infrastructure and organizations, there's so much more that we can get done. Like mm -hmm. we just invested in new cameras. You know, the cameras that we wear on our on ourselves. Mm. We've invested in new yeah. ones that have just expedited the process so much easier. Um, like now, we've only just invested in cloud CCTV sharing. So, for example, if you're a, a victim and you want to send me yeah. evidence, video evidence, I can send you a hyperlink. You upload your footage online to this right. thing, and now mm. I have access to it. Do you know what I mean? Like we've only yeah. just got that. Whilst before, I had to go That's to a you. Bit slow, yeah. I had to go to you. I had mm. to say, "Hey, 
have you got it on can you burn it on a dvd for me please oh no yeah. i've got a usb okay give me that usb i come back <laughs> floppy back. disk I, bro bro yeah <laughs> i had to plug it into a computer try and you know find the right um what's the word video encoder or whatever for it hope to god that it works then i have to plug it into this vcr system sort of thing like mm. a dvd burner have it play and then record the screen Mm. Oh, bro, it was long. Imagine how much time that took. It was the bane of my existence, bro. <laughs> <Do you laughs> stuff like yeah. that. It just when they yeah. say, "Oh, can you go to such and such to get CCTV?" It was just like, mm. no. Like it was the worst thing to do. <laughs> I would rather deal with you know dead bodies and stuff at some point because it would just infuriate me. At least the dead right. body, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, mm. That seems like proper slow progress, but I guess you got to get the security side right, isn't it? Yeah, and there's money and there's like. You know, got to remember, mm. like people are slow anyway. Not everybody's too up to date with technology. Um, yeah. You know, you've only got like one tech guy in the, you know, in the locally mm. that's interested See. in this stuff, and he's obviously mm. spent his whole life trying to convince people, the people with the money, to to make these purchase decisions. Yeah, um, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. So. Now that's why this virus thing is interesting because now it's forcing people to just you know do this big experiment of like work from home and stuff yeah, you know what that's one thing that you're right actually i didn't think about that like, this could be like the second tech revolution do you know what i mean where things mm. are now, like we've already we've had the technology is available for all of this stuff but the shift towards it hasn't been as big like people are still actively getting up at nine and going to work like doing a nine yeah. to five and do you understand like it's sort of decorated our lives but <clears> it hasn't taken over the spaces that we think it would in a way that it's basically shifted it for the forever, you know. For yeah, example, yeah. We still- I think that's because companies want to re- ma- maintain control of employees. Yeah, um, and they don't trust them to do the work at home. But, I don't think I would personally. But, but all of that could be alleviated once you control the systems that the co- those people use. Because yeah, but I'm talking about like from a productivity point of view. I don't believe people are like the average person is organized enough to get a good day's I, I know, you know, work what done. Try, what yeah. I'm trying to say is mm. that all of that information is logged. Like, if I oh yeah, if you want to like record people's screens exactly. and stuff, so you can do yeah. that. But you can yeah. also say, okay, I mean, I want you to go, you know, hard work from home today, and this mm. is, you know, this is the amount of work I expect from you, blah blah. blah. And bear in mind, you could be dip checked if you're not, you know, working. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't yeah, even yeah. have to do it. It's just a fear that you might be dip checked. Yeah, that's and, true. And that's yeah. the issue with like that. We've got <laughs> that as well. Like, you know, we know that they're not checking every single thing we do. But they might mm. like i've been checked yeah, twice yeah, yeah. or three times out yeah. of the blue what will happen is like they'll so you'll get an email and it will say on such and such a day at such and such a time you searched so and so person or this or this vehicle or whatever mm. please justify why you did so oh okay yeah so just accountability exactly. kind of processes and i'm yeah. like oh my god and this is why i have to write down every like every time i check someone i need to try mm. and remember what i was doing and why i did it yeah you know so I have see to that's write it good down. bro yeah you know what I mean? Because yeah, if I can't yeah, justify yeah. it, then it's actually a breach of data. And I've mm. just checked the secure database for absolutely no reason but to, to, for myself. Mm. Do you have you ever searched me, bro? No, bro, because that is, I have no policing purpose. <laughs> oh. Like, why would I do that? <laughs> I want to know what blacklist I'm on, bro. Because whenever I go bro, through passport control, after, what, 69 episodes, they don't let me through. I think I would have found out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bro. Uh, but how did it last? Yeah. Bro, it's been a yeah. good episode, bro. Yes. 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 I think I'm not going to call it, I don't want to call it like Corona episode. I want to call it like something to do with policing or something like that. Uh, call it uh, something to do with, I don't know, the front line, something. I don't want to just put police in the title, bro. That's just too bait. Emergency services in brackets in the age of Corona. Uh Put the, 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 you just have to word put the word Corona for the for the download. I was going to ask the listeners for a title idea, but it would be too late by the time it. It is. would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, we Actually, really... I wanted to ask the listeners if uh, they could uh, just let us know by any of the medium. Um, do you like my solo episodes? Right, because sometimes I think it's handy for me to do those. Like if you can't get around to recording, yeah, it's handy, and I, I don't mind doing it. I need to do some research and thoughts before doing it, but um, I want to know because I know some people said they're not really into the solo episodes. Yeah. So let us know. In short, I think, bro. I think uh, my personal view is that number one, it was thirty minutes, which is great. Like I think it's just the right time. But number two, if you're doing it with a purpose, mm. like you're doing it with a message to say 
then it's it's brilliant to me because I feel like it's just like listening to a lecture. You understand? Mm. Like you listen to someone giving a lecture. Like you came to that with clear. I felt like you did it with clear direction of what message you wanted to send, and I think that's yeah. what's necessary. And I think even mm. if it's, I know like people. I don't know if people listen to the entire episodes that we do, but I feel like even if it's a ten minute episode or a twenty minute episode, like just to put something out. As long mm. as it's got a clear message and you're not just I'm in an yeah. because you don't know what you want to talk about, you know that's the yeah. thing. Like, yeah, that's a good point actually. Like when I did it, it was like thirty minutes, thirty five minutes. Like that's still like some that's material, isn't people. it? That's yeah, for people, you know. And yeah. I, like I, I don't know. Obviously, everybody's situation is different. Like some people have all the time in the world to listen to podcasts. I remember I did in my old job. I'm really struggling now, and I do love podcasts, but I'm really struggling to find the time to listen to it actively because mm. if I'm not at work, I'm at home and I've got two kids and i'm running around like crazy and then i you know i get an hour to myself well you know with with my wife but then i just get too sleepy and i fall asleep anyway yeah yeah so yeah so everybody's different everybody's different um mm. i think i think people would appreciate getting something at rise opposed to getting nothing you know, if, yeah yeah if, yeah, if, yeah if they're fans of the heist mind <laughs> yeah uh oh yeah i just want to say before we, we close um i i saw something about you know like i think the in the uk they're rushing a few laws through uh currently and i, I heard something about um the law might allow them to force you to cremate someone so that means like muslims in the uk might be forced to have their you know whoever uh, dies of the virus to to be cremated right oh, yeah. and obviously we don't want that to be um in the law so if you go to MEND, the MEND website, MEND, you know that organization to do with something like political engagement, something in the yeah. UK for Muslims. So they've got some information there on like how you can uh, uh, let your opinion be known or something. So I wanted to highlight that because that seems pretty serious. Um, it's like, that's nothing like closing Masjid. That's like, come on, like a Muslim getting cremated. That's like not acceptable. Yeah. So uh, check that out. And yeah, go to mindheistpodcast.com to find out how you can uh, either follow us on Instagram or whatever, or um, contact us, inshallah. We welcome uh, questions and comments and stuff, so please do that. And uh, yeah, Muhammad, what's the last word? La ilaha illallah. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Very good. Okay, cool. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. La ilaha illallah. <laughs>